Well, it's finally that time for me to review Mortal Online 2 and my time within the game and what I've done, where I've been, and my overall thoughts on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let me introduce this video. This video is going to be a comprehensive review. It's going to be a little bit long, but let me promise that I will try to make it as concise as I can. If you're interested in a specific topic, look at timestamps in the description or just scroll along the timeline for something specific. But I'm going to go ahead and start with myself. Who am I? What have I done? Where have I been? What are my accolades within the game? Let me just start by saying that I've done everything that you can do in this game and then some. I've played this game around 4,000 hours over the course of a year and a half. If you do the math on that, that is a lot of time within the game. So I've done everything in the game from solo play as a total noob coming in with no friends and nobody to play with to small group play up to starting and building a guild from the ground up that was largely successful all the way to the highest echelons of the game. The, the guild Black Priest lasted for about a year. We secured World First in the Necro Dungeon, which was the first and only dungeon they've added to the game since launch. And that's coming from nothing. We also built an alliance. We had four guilds in the alliance, and I was running that as well. I've also had that guild fall apart, right? I've had uh, Black Priest fell apart just because we had a bunch of different people, small groups within the guild that wanted to do their own thing on opposite sides of the map. So we broke apart. So I've experienced everything you can imagine from starting as a total noob in the graveyard, getting killed by the sweaty guys who played beta, all the way into running an alliance and having that alliance die. I've built videos upon videos teaching people how to play this game. I've kind of become the build guide guy in the community, and I get compliments and recognized all the time in-game, which is cool. It is cool. It's a really nice feeling. Uh, th some of those guides are dated. I will be updating them in the near future for any returning viewers that are curious about that. But I've played this game without even being inside the game. And what I mean by that is you can play this game on Discord right which is something that i'm going to talk about a little bit more in depth later in this video i think of it as a negative but you can play this game outside of this game as well a lot of this game is ego a lot of this game is shit talking a lot of this game is just on the side so uh introduction aside let me go ahead and get started here i've got some topics i'm going to cover i'm going to talk about the tech behind the game i'm going to talk about the pvp the pve the crafting and profession system the skill system and the tedium that comes with it, the community itself, the immersion, the developers themselves, and then my conclusion will be talking about all the pros and cons rapid fire side by side to give you guys an overall view of this game. So let's jump into the thesis that I have for this review. My overarching view of Mortal Online 2 is that it is not an MMO, but it is a private server, a very fancy private server and that will be controversial right some people will argue different different views and that's fine but let's talk a little bit about the tech to give some backstory since i know this is a review and give some context i'm just going to cover some of the basics mortal online 2 is a game that has one global server the global server sustains anywhere from 700 to 1500 players at any given time throughout the day with thousands of players cycling through, logging in and out constantly throughout the day. That alone would be a good argument for saying that it is an MMO and not a private server. But there are huge downsides to this system that I'll talk about and there are some upsides. One downside is it is a fantasy based MMO. It has melee combat, it has magic. Magic is one thing. It is somewhat easy to run that in a global setting, but melee comes down to split second decisions for parrying and reposting and actually attacking. So there are massive downsides to having a player on the server in the UK versus somebody in Australia. And the unfortunate reality is you cannot speed up the speed of light. And for every single action and response within the game, light has to travel around the globe several times, which can lead to pings in the three, four, 500 range for players in Australia. 
It is also bad for players in North America. The farther west, the worse it gets. And you have to download programs like Exit Lag to try and re reduce and mitigate this problem, depending on where you are in the globe. And it doesn't just affect the people in Australia. It also affects the people on the server because the people in Australia get handicaps. They get benefits called ping equalization. So it can feel unfair for both sides. And I feel this dramatically hurts the game for the small upsides that it provides. Small upsides include global server. You get to meet people all across the globe and become friends with them or enemies with them, right? And there are downsides to that culturally. Um, I feel that racism is a lot more rampant in different parts of the world from where I live in California, and I don't tolerate it. I don't deal with it. And there's parts of the community that it is normalized. And I stray from those people. They've been they've slowly been shunned and they're slowly getting silenced by the community managers and stuff like that. But that is a huge, huge downside is parts of the world, racism is rampant. And I don't tolerate it in my personal life. I'm not going to tolerate it in my video games that I play. So there are downsides there. The upside is you get to meet awesome people from across the globe. And the majority of those people are awesome, right? When I was running Black Priest, like 30% of our members were from the EU. There are some really good friends that I will try to play other games with that I met in Mortal Online, but that just leads to another downside. Almost no other games on planet Earth are global. So if I want to play a game with Demra, or if I want to play a game with Ganondar, I'm going to have problems playing with them on almost any other game. A lot of games block you based off your ping alone because it's not a good mechanic and it is not worth it. They squandered the opportunity with the UE5 relaunch of doing a new server for North America. Okay, So to avoid going on a tangent here and getting way into the weeds with the tech, that is a positive and a negative for the game. Other things in the tech department that they do extremely well, right, is you do have high player counts. It is higher than a standard private server for most games. Right? unless you're talking like Factorio or something extremely simple. The ability that they have to have 1,200 players in the server at once, albeit spread out across the globe, is impressive. Right, Their server meshing technology, where you go from one server to the other seamlessly without load screens or transitions, is impressive. Right, it is, It's funny that you see reviews of Star Citizen and all these other huge, huge games Right, Star Citizen with half a billion dollars in funding compared to these little guys in Europe, this little tiny team that has had no load screens for years now, right? And you've got huge, gigantic battles with 400 players in real time, all fighting over territory, right? There is something to be said about the, the tech behind this game. They are doing stuff that no other game can do. There is no other game out there on the market right now. None that can have 400 players at this level of quality, at this level of immersion, right? With melee combat and magic flying all over the place and have all those people in one tight little place, right? This replication layer, if you follow Star Citizen, that everybody is hailing as new technology, new fantastic stuff, oh, it'll, you know, replicate the server so that if there's a server crash it'll keep going mortal online has had that for a while now right and it's you know props out there shout out to farmer joe the guy behind all of this tech that's working for star vault he's doing a fantastic job and there is some unicorns working there that are just making shit work and it is really really cool right so there is things that star vault is doing that make this game amazing right so that's enough about the tech. The tech is cool. There's a lot of really cool things going on behind the scenes that you might not know as a player loading in and you take for granted, like being able to see Tindrum from across the planet. If you can be in the jungle on top of a mountain and you can look out over the horizon and see Tindrum, and then you can walk all the way there without a load screen and get to the city. That's super cool. Okay, but enough on tech. Let's talk about PVP. Pros and cons. PvP is fantastic in this game because it is action-based and skill-based, generally. There are some big downsides. The pets 
can be overpowered. There are certain builds that sit overpowered for way too long. The pacing of development is far too slow for a game like this. And in this game is slow, but the development is even slower. So PVP, fantastic. It's action-based. You can get in with a group and use tactics. Tactics actually matter. Uh, running choke points across the globe, like positioning matters. All that stuff matters, right? PVP, phenomenal. I'd give it a fucking A+, plus, right? Downsides, though, you've got pets that are still completely broken. Um, metas sit for far too long before they get nerfed. But generally, what I'll say for their balance patches is their bal balance patches generally hit pretty well. There's been one recurring theme with pets. Pets are always broken. It is one button to kill people. And even if you hate them, you feel like you have to use them because they are so good. So if they can fix that problem, great perfect pvp would be in a fantastic spot i think that pvp is fantastic and honestly it is what keeps a lot of the veterans logging back in it's because the pvp is good it's fun and that is so hard to nail with modern mmos and modern games it's making just fun gameplay is tough let's talk about pve pve it's weird because pve hits a sweet spot where it's just good enough to keep the PvE guys who only want to PvE interested in the game, right? Full loot PvP MMOs like this often cannibalize themselves because you get the PvP sweaty guys who kill all the noobs, and then the only people left are PvP sweaty guys who, unless they're the ultimate Giga Chad, they don't really enjoy fighting each other too much because they want to kill people and get loot. So they cannibalize the game. They end up eating themselves and the game dies. Right, So you need those guys who enjoy PvE, they enjoy raiding, they enjoy doing that type of content and building a community and building a kingdom and doing all, and you know taxing people and doing all that type of shit or get really rich through, through trade, all that stuff. You need those guys invested so that the game doesn't die. And this game has kind of hit a sweet spot with that, right? If you compare the PvE to other games that are focused on PvE, it falls flat. It's extremely basic. The Necro Dungeon was a fantastic addition. I feel like they nailed that. But if you look at every dungeon before the Necro Dungeon, it is a copy-paste of the same mob over and over again until you get to the boss, which has like two mechanics. And that's it. Now, the use of PvE to incentivize player movement and combat in interaction is what they nail, right? The Minotaur King doesn't just drop a recipe to teach you how to create new armors. He drops an axe. And that axe then has to be transferred from the dungeon, which you have to get out safely, all the way to Tindrum, which is, you know, a 45 minute to an hour ride. So you have to tra travel across the map with an item that if you get killed, you drop it. Everything that you've done to that point could be totally wasted. Right, So now you're incentivized to not go by yourself, to find friends, to build a community, to have a guild, that you can transport this item of high value across the planet without getting killed. That is cool. That is good. We, the game needs more of that. And it's frustrating to me when I see developers release huge chunks of content based around magic and then have it completely available at the vendor. Right, Elementalism to get off on a small side tangent, has six or so different categories of spells, each with 10 spells each. And the first two were meant to be for everybody so that everybody can have basic magic skills. Totally agree with that. But the other ones, being able to summon a giant fire tornado or rain meteors from the sky, that needs to be available to everyone. Why wasn't that added to a boss? Why wasn't that added to the troll drops? Why wasn't that added to something that would incentivize people to get out to the world and do shit, right? So, small tangent done. Let's talk about crafting. Let's talk about professions. The crafting and profession system is actually really engaging. It's very well done. You can combine anything with everything to make what you're trying to make. If you want to make armor out of reptile skin and, and wolf fur, it gives you B tier PVP armor pretty good right? But then you can go all the way up to steel and you need to know how to use and work with steel to make it uh, come out in a usable fashion. Um, 
and you can experiment and you can figure things out that nobody has figured out. And funny enough, the development speed is so slow that metas, the crafting meta, will change over time as people figure shit out, even though the developers have done nothing to change it, right? Um, so, you know, the ability to, the, the li intentional limitation of skills so that you can only do so much is also a very good thing. One thing that Mortal Online does really, really well, I think honestly by accident, is they encourage players to talk to each other. They encourage players to work together. And if you realize that you can only do a small handful of things on your character, right? I can only, cra I can only be a sword crafter and maybe one other thing before I'm shot and I need these other things. I need good pet armor. I need somebody who can scribe for me. You realize very quickly, I need to make some friends, right? Or I need to buy a bunch of alt accounts, which is another downside, <laughs> right? The single party, the single character system has pros and downsides. The pro is it encourages players to work together, especially when they're new to the game. The downside is it encourages people to buy alternate accounts so that they can craft their own shit on their own. And I don't think the game is sustainable with that mentality. So let's talk about skills and tedium. Another thing, it's a good transition talking about skills. Skills are cool, but terribly implemented, right? You can really fine tune a character and, you know, oh, for mounted archery, you only need around 81 points for the bounce to be sustainable for most players or you know for ecumenical you don't need earthquakes so let's go up to 62 we don't need to put a full hundred points into it and stuff like that that's cool but you could break this system down into a much more digestible fashion you could do a point-based system hey you have 12 points and you can put a full point into ecumenical to get the 100 point equivalent or you could put half a point into it and you get 50 right now some people don't appreciate simplicity like that i'm one of those people i'm one of those weirdos that knows every little detail about the character creation system and how to fine-tune a character and that's why i make videos on it right but the overarching community of players that play a game like this don't give two shits about it they copy paste whatever the build is from the guy who knows about it they come to a video like mine or they ask their friend that's been playing a lot what do you do and they just copy paste it they don't know why they don't care they just get their character the way it's supposed to be and then they play the game right but there is a huge chunk of players that don't play the game because it is needlessly complex for no reason right that is a huge downside to mortal online you cannot get me started on how terrible that is for the game right it is needlessly complex and needlessly tedious for no reason at all there is no reason that to level my fireball skill, I need to sit in a house with my reagents and cast a spell hundreds, if not thousands of times into the wall to level up my skill because I'll fumble if I fail it, right? Can you imagine if that system applied to melee combat? You pull out a sword, your sword skill's low, you swing it and halfway through the swing, you're like, nah, ah, I dropped my sword. Are you kidding me? It is needlessly tedious for no reason at all. The system needs to be completely reworked for how you level certain skills. Leveling magic is a pain in the dick. Why does my character uh, need to walk at a crawl speed if I put heavy armor on, right? Why does that system work the way that it does? Ask yourself that question. What What's a better system that we could use to make it so that heavy armor is wearable on a foot fighter the second you get started? Make the stamina regen really low or... Um, there's a there's a, a mountain of different things you could do to make it so that the skill system is still important. I still need to choose where my points go, and it still matters. And I can't just swap it on uh, on a dime, right? If I'm going into a battle, you do not want it to be so easy that I'm a mage right now. I'm going into a fight, and we don't have any foot fighters. Boom! I'm a foot fighter by just swapping my points around. That is way too easy. Nobody wants that. But we want the ability to respec and change our character, especially limited to one character, ideally, uh, from a mage or a foot fighter into the opposite within a 24-hour window. 
right? Sped up by active gameplay, right? Everybody wants that. It would be a huge benefit for the game. It is really annoying having this terrible tedium, right? Community, simultaneously, the best and worst community I've ever seen in a game, right? Same with the developers. <laughs> it's, 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 it's such a two-faced coin with Mortal Online. The community, when you're playing with your friends and you build a community of like-minded players and you go through the effort to do that or you find a really good group of people to join is phenomenal. And that's not saying much. You could say that about literally any other game. If you find good people, you're going to have a good time. Okay. But what I'll say about Mortal Online, which is kind of a downside, is if that community falls apart or stops playing because they lose interest in the game, then your gameplay is destroyed. There is no comparison playing solo versus playing with a group. If you're playing with a group, you can do anything. If you're playing solo, you can do a small handful of things. Most of them are not going to benefit you at the stage of the game that you're in because you've done that stuff already. So when your group falls apart, you either find a new one, which can be tough in a small game like this, or you're done with the game. So the community drives the game, but it's also terrible because of how small it is and largely because the developers have not provided a good way to talk to each other. They rely heavily on Discord. There's a lot of functionality in the game that you can do only through Discord. Global trade is done through Discord. High value items, all done through the official Discord. This is not some side Discord. There are those, but most of the trade is done through the official Discord. Finding a guild, official Discord. The fact that these functionalities do not exist in an MMO and they rely on players in the modern world to come to their Discord to figure this shit out is insane to me. Why is there not a guild board in a town limited to, you know, your guild gets to pick one town to put your, your name in, right? If you're a Bhakti guild or whatever, or a Fav guild. Why is that not a thing? That takes five minutes and it's not a thing. So building a community... Right? You got guys like me who build guilds. Right, Building a community is inherently difficult because finding people to talk to is difficult. And the only reason is it is as successful as it is, I believe, is on accident because of the mechanics that they've put in place to encourage players to work together, limiting skills and stuff like that. So give players the ability to talk to each other in the game world in a meaningful way. Now, I don't mean global chat. In fact, help chat should be disabled for lack of a, a better tutorial, right? So the community, simultaneously the best, simultaneously the worst. This is the only game that I've ever covered where I got death threats. I'll just say that. So Robmo, he gets a lot of hate, but at the end of the day, I think Robmo is a fantastic thing for this game. He has done a lot to kind of clean up the community and remove the hyper-toxic, the racist, the, the what I would consider evil guys in the community. Um, so props to you, Rob Mo. I think you're doing a great job. Keep going with what you're doing and kind of, you know, he, he reels Henrik in and kind of puts him back on track occasionally, which is also nice, All right? Let's talk about the developers. That's a good transition to talk about developers. Star Vault Games run by Henrik, simultaneously the best and worst developers of all time. It is crazy to me. I went back and played Mortal Online 1. That is a dumpster fire, and it is crazy to me that Mortal Line 2, Line 2 even exists, right? They're GMs, simultaneously best and worst GMs of all time. You can talk to a GM and get the best hands-on, most personal service you've ever had in a video game ever. Or flip the coin, talk to a GM, and get completely cold-shouldered or completely ignored because they have no idea what you're talking about. It's rarely in between. So when, when it works, it works. When it doesn't, it's terrible. So I can, that's all I can say about that. But developers, Henrik is an interesting guy. He is very clearly a player. He's very clearly one of us who just really, really wants to make the game that he wanted as a kid and is going the extra mile to make that happen. You can tell genuinely loves this game. He genuinely loves what he does. There is no other CEO on the planet, no other game developer on the planet that logs in on Twitch every week to talk to their community and answer with a smile 
the same questions that he's been asked thousands of times before. What really drives it home is oftentimes his streams will go for an extra two, three hours because he just enjoys talking to his community and talking about his game. And he just enjoys being there and having a good time. So nobody can question this man's passion and his goals and what he wants for his game. But what I'll say is that some design decisions are antiquated at best. The single player, single character decision is very clearly just a alternative revenue stream that doesn't benefit the game at this point. Having limited to one character is insane. No fast travel at all, stop, like end of story, hurts the game, right? There are ways to do fast travel because the pacing in the game is so terrible that you could severely limit the tangible benefits of fast travel. I understand the overarching vision of, oh, well, your logistics need to be in place and it takes them a long time to travel across the world. So attacks can be ambushes and all that. I understand all that. But the tangible benefit of that is largely just in your brain. You think that it's cool. It's not actually cool. Sweaty guilds that care about that type of shit have multiple accounts. They have multiple players logged out all over the place. Everything that's important that they would need to defend, they've got a character there, right? So why can't we have a player that is completely naked? Just absolutely naked. You cannot bring anything other than your soul-bound items, like your jewelry. Like when you travel as a ghost, right? That's the only form of fast travel in the game. When you click home or you click priest, you fast travel as a dead person. Uh, why can't we have that as a living person going from capital city to capital city at a 24 hour cooldown, right? So that it can't be super abused in your mind. But the pacing of the game is so infinitely slow. I know that if I log into Mortal Online 2, it doesn't matter where the fuck I logged out at or what I was wearing or what I was doing. If I wanna play with my boys, it is at least 30 minutes before we're doing shit. 30 minutes. If I'm locking into an MMO as an adult who has a job and has kids and stuff like that, and I just want to play the game, 30 minutes on the front end before we get started is insane. It's absolutely insane. The pacing in this game is garbage. It is garbage. Like going out and doing shit is a chore. Getting together is a chore. Those huge fights I've uploaded onto YouTube when we were doing the ACT stuff, when we were doing the, these massive 500, 400 player battles some of the coolest moments in the game is precursored by four to five hours of people getting their shit together. So all of the huge, huge benefits of this game come with a huge caveat as well. Like I said, it's such a two-faced coin with Mortal Online. If you want to be part of those 500 player battles, enjoy the three to four to five hour wait before they get started. So for the players that don't mind doing that stuff, let me say that this game is one of the best games of all time. There are no other games out there where every single item a character is wearing is crafted. It drops when you die. It's win or lose. That type of game, to me, is what I love. I love Rust. I love Tarkov. I love that type of stuff. The rush, the adrenaline rush, when you get in a fight, you're wearing your really good gear. You don't want to lose. You don't want to lose it. You don't want to die. In an MMO, not, a, not only an MMO, but a fantasy setting, all that stuff, super cool. Super well done. This game has, I will say, the best magic I've ever seen in an MMO, period, right? In mo even in most single player games, being able to spawn a fucking tornado in the middle of a battlefield is cool. That type of stuff is fucking cool. They nailed the magic, right? But everything else is struggling. <laughs> like melee fucking sucks right now. And Stam on Perry, cool, just was added. Cool, finally. How long did it take? Year and a half, two years of people begging for that? Come on, guys. Come on, like the little things that people want that are so easily implemented. It's just frustrating. It wears on you. And then you get the, the lifers like Fuel Kills or whatever his name on Reddit. People that spend every waking day thinking about Mortal Online, talking shit about Mortal Online, but at the end of the day they log in and they play every day. So, yeah. Yeah, so let's let's wrap this up with a conclusion. Rapid fire, pros and cons list. Pros. This game has insane technology behind it. 
huge player battles in tight spaces and high server count or high server population for an individual server. All that stuff, great. The immersion in this game is absolutely amazing. You turn off help chat and you just sit down and focus in on the game. This game is the most immersive MMO on the market, period. They talk about it, Henrik talks about it, he's not lying. This game sucks you in, you get totally engrossed in it. It's very easy to just forget the outside world. So if you're looking for something like that, this is good for you. Insane magic, like I just talked about, magic is absolutely nuts. They've nailed it. Good job, keep it up. Skill-based PvP, this game is largely skill-based. Part of the skill is learning how to build a character, learning where your skills need to go, and all the nuances behind that, which is a downside to the game. But when you're actually fighting, you're actually locked into the combat, it is skill-based, and it is very good. The cons of the game. Uh, dated design philosophies is what I had at number one. The one character limit, the global server, all of that stuff needs to be thrown out the window. It is hurting the game far more than it is helping it. It sounds good on paper, which I think is how Henrik plays the game today. I think Henrik plays this game on paper. He doesn't play it himself, which I think hurts the game. He talks about it a lot, but he doesn't log in and actually play. Slow updates. The pace of development is extremely slow. Oftentimes developers will lie or mislead about their pacing and then let the players down. Never once has Star Vault under promised and over delivered partially because Henrik has to log in every week onto stream and he often talks for five hours to his community and you can only talk so much to a community of your fans without promising more. And I think that's a lesson that he's slowly learning over time, but Star Vault to date has never under promised and over delivered. They never said Necro's coming out in a month and then released it in three weeks. Never once. Uh, another huge downside is the tedium for the sake of tedium. The unnecessary mining, the AFK mining, the uh, macroing to level up a mage. Like if you don't have macros for your mage, it is the most tedious thing you will ever do in a video game. And for people that care about the quality of their time, they will just log out. They're just not going to do it. I'm weird. I have a lot of mages, uh, but I definitely macro that shit. So I'm not going <laughs> to, if I had to do it by hand, I would just, I would just go play something else. And I've kind of been doing that for a couple months. Pacing. Yeah. So kind of goes hand in hand with tedium. But what I mean by pacing is just getting in and being able to do something. Talking to your friends, hanging out with your friends in Discord is not doing something. Is it enjoyable? Yes. But I'm talking about getting out into the world, getting out into Mortal Online and doing something within the confines of Mortal Online. Rolling out with your boys on horseback to go roam the plains and hunt players, go to a dungeon, craft some shit, gather resources, build something. Just doing anything in this game takes forever. So, good and bad, but mostly bad. And... The other thing that really needs to be improved is community. The ability to build guilds needs to be far improved. There needs to be boards in town where people can browse guilds and find a guild organically in game. If they have to come to the discord to find a guild, you are wrong and it needs to be fixed. Please fix this stuff, Sarvalt. I would say that this game is in the top three for me for the games of all time. It would be Hard to argue against with the amount of time that I've put into this game over the course of a year, but I have finally reached the point where I feel like I've done everything. And that's partially because of the slow development and lack of updates. But I also believe that the game is in the best place it has ever been in. This game was very clearly an alpha up until very recently that should have not been released, right? And it all boils down to Henrik. He's a player like us. He wants to play it. He wants to put it in our hands. Imagine being a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons, right? Which is what I can compare it to the most. Imagine being a dungeon master, working tirelessly to build what you think is the most epic campaign ever for your friends. And then having to, you know, delay and delay and delay, giving it to them. It would it just eats you up. And eventually you just release it. So I feel that like he's suffering from that. It's a tough thing to deal with. Right? There's no easy answer other than just throw more money at it. I don't think they have the money to do that. So I hope, I really do hope that this game keeps moving in the right direction. 
they're able to pick up more developers, and they're able to put out actual content now that they're in UE5. This game is one of the best games ever created, and I think it's on accident. And I hope, I really hope, that they're able to pull their shit together, fix the downsides, or at least mitigate them a lot, so that people can get involved in this game and it can keep growing. Thanks for listening to my super long tangent. I'm sorry. Uh, See you guys next time.